Thank you all so much for coming out. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Panalides, and I'm the mayor of the city of Annapolis. scheduled to be here in about 30 minutes, so it's my job to do some introduction and housekeeping remarks. The first thing I want to do, and I know I don't have to do a lot, is to keep you all excited before we go into this. And the first thing is how close this election is going to be, and what I need each and every one of you to do to make sure we win. Anne Arundel County, probably more than any other county, has had very, very close elections. And the little things that each and every one of you do, those will make the difference. Where I won my election, I won with 59 votes. We had a state senate race in Anne Arundel County that was determined by 36 votes. We had a county council race in the primary determined by 36 votes. Everything makes a difference. So what are they? What can each and every one of you do? The first thing is take a yard sign. Name ID is so important. It gives instant validation and it shows your neighbors that you support them. So when you leave here, please make sure you take a yard sign. The other thing I want to tell everyone, and I see a couple people are doing it, is to turn on your phones. This isn't church, don't turn them off, turn them off. <laughs> take some photos, take some selfies, and put them online. Put them on Facebook, put them on Twitter, put them on Instagram, and share it with all your friends and family. Any clippings, any videos you have of the governor, make sure you share them. Because the more people see it, the more positive reinforcement you have of why we need Governor Kasich to win this election. So thank you all so much. for coming out and supporting John Kasich to be our next president. Well, Governor, we're proud of the work that you've done as a governor, as a congressman, and the work that you're going to do as President of the United States of America. I was coming here and somebody asked me, why are you supporting John Kasich for President? And I told him, because the country needs a strong leader to take us forward. I said, the national debt, the taxes, we're on an unsustainable path. And when you look at someone who has the leadership and the vision to do it, we've seen that with Governor Kasich. Let me put this in perspective for everyone. The last time the federal government was balanced was when John Kasich was the budget chairman. You could be a commander in chief. America used to have a lot of respect and prominence in the world, and some of that's gone away. Last night I was speaking to all the service academies. We had people from Air Force, West Point, the Naval Academy, and I was congratulating them on two new majors they're offering, cyber operations and nuclear engineering. The challenges we face in America in cybersecurity are historic and unprecedented. The country's never seen a threat like we faced before. People from other countries are able to take in hack our bank accounts, steal our personal records, and they could even take control of a nuclear reactor. And who's the one person that's running, that's been on the Armed Service Committee, that has more experience than everyone combined? John, John someone going to do? And all you have to do is look at their record. In Ohio, he took away $8 billion. 
billion dollar deficit and created a surplus. He cut taxes, he cut regulations, and he put people back to work, which is what he's going to do for America when he's president. Commander-in-Chief, you know, kind of standing in this room, looks like a boxing match. He's ready to take it on, because like I said, the challenges we face, we've never seen before. And we got a man with leadership, with vision, with passion, and a proven track record. And that's why I'm proud to stand here today. I want you to make some noise, get excited for the next president. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, no, I, I set out a five-year plan. Uh, I had worked on campaigns. I managed political campaigns from mayor's race, state senate race. Worked for a software company, did government relations, selling pack management software, other things. Was president of my community association. So, had a five-year plan. I set out, and it's what I want to accomplish. And it's been a blessing. Now, how many people do you represent? 38,000 people. 38,000. All right, you got a, I think you got an up and coming here, don't you? Yeah. Steel industry back to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. And you know what? Everybody that lives in Pittsburgh is going to be a billionaire. I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to do it. I'm just telling you, by the way. And everybody here is going to own their own hotel. <laughs> tell you something. What I worry about in this country is the drift. If Hillary and Bernie were to be elected, we're at 19 trillion in debt. The debt would be 30 trillion. Yep. Okay, it would be 30 trillion. And I tell these young people, you know, on the college campuses, okay, you want to get a job? 30 trillion dollars in national debt? I don't think you're going to get a very good job. And the other, the other guys have never accomplished anything. So what are we going to do? Drift? We have to, can we fix Social Security? Piece of cake. Piece of cake. If you have had a lifetime, sir, you're still going to get Social Security, but you're not going to get as much as you thought you were going to get. But the lady who totally depends on it, she's going to get what she needs. Okay. Are you okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, you want to balance the budget? Let me, let me show you something. Let me have that. See this? My, my children, a number of years ago, when they were like 10 or 11, we were on vacation, and they said, Daddy, what is that box over there? And I'm looking, I'm, I, oh, and I said, that's where Superman changes his clothes. <laughs> and I said, and Mom and Dad, Mom and Dad used to put coins in there to make a phone call. And um, they're like, no way. <laughs> so think about this. Everything is changing. Let me tell you, the time's going to come. You're not going to go to the doctor most of the time. You're going to be monitored at home. Transportation, you can go from one part of Manhattan to the other for like nothing, and you don't even go in a taxi anymore. You know, you get you do Uber or Lyft or one of these other, other groups. They say we're going to have flying cars. I completely believe it because I saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Let me tell you a couple other things. Think about medicine. We can complain about medicine. My Uncle George came to the Duquesne Club today to see me. He's 90 years old. He walks in. I said, Uncle George, did you walk today? He said, yep, two miles, Johnny. I, you think about everything in our country. I mentioned this earlier. You see, when business does not change, it dies. When government doesn't change, we get punished. And we have to just think about bringing innovation and excitement and change to the way the world works. That's the 21st century. So all those things put together can, can lift us. And let me just tell you, we aren't going anywhere but up if we get this done. But if we drift, <laughs> and I get more fun. <laughs> Just say to all of you, uh, look, we we're competing here in in your great state, and um, I even let you know the Maryland basketball team beat Ohio State. A couple of
how the primary goes, we'll look at the football program. <laughs> but I, I, I've got to go because I got to head. I got to head into D.C. or somewhere. They're all yelling. One second, one second. So, uh, oh, I've got some. Yeah, look at this, huh? Thanks for fighting for us. Hope that look brings you good luck. And we had a question. voted for that against me on that one amendment. Uh -oh. <laughs> Why don't you come on over and give me a high five? <laughs>